The people have spoken and I'm back with another Total Drama full story video, this time on the third season, World Tour. Total Drama World Tour has continued to cement itself in history as one of the most popular and beloved Total Drama seasons. From the catchy musical numbers in every episode, the introduction to one of the best villains in the entire series, and of course, more relationship drama than ever before. So let's dive into everything Total Drama World Tour. So just like Total Drama action, Total Drama World Tour picks up right where the epilogue episode from the previous season ended, with just a select few contestants contestants from the original lineup being allowed to compete again. Characters like Cody, Noah, Tyler, and Ezekiel that didn't get a chance in action were now allowed to compete for the million. Alongside the new cast additions of Sierra, the Total Drama superfan who is obsessed with Cody in particular, and Alejandro Boromuerto, just an all-around terrible guy who was supposed to star in a new Total Drama spin-off run by Chris, but switched to World Tour after they revealed the spin-off being fake. The first episode opens with all the contestants arriving at an airport area to find that their new home base is going to be a giant cargo plane, with its own coach and first class sections. Every challenge will take place in a different part of the world slash focus on the culture of said place they visit, where the winning teams will be allowed to stay in the first class until the next challenge, while the rest stay in coach and of course the overall losers having to vote someone off. Granted, similarly to Action's episode structure, there will be instances where nobody gets voted off at all if Chris feels like calling out a reward challenge, with the season being over 20 episodes and less than 20 contestants. The Aftermath specials return as well, where they feel like they have a lot more significance this time around to compared to last season. Season. Like, sometimes the stuff that goes on there will directly affect how future episodes play out for the contestants still in the game. Something I very much welcomed because the Aftermath stuff last season felt like a bit of a chore to watch through at times. The first big challenge of the season is set to take place in Egypt, but before they get there, Chris has everyone sing their first musical number of the season, which is something you have to partake in or you're automatically kicked off. Genuinely very impressed with every cast member's singing skills this season, by the way. Some, of course, got more time in the spotlight than others, but everyone did a good job regardless of how many or little songs they were able to partake in. Once everyone arrives in Egypt, Chris tasks everyone to run through an ancient pyramid and meet up with them on the other side. This little part of the challenge would be the start of DJ's main gimmick throughout his time in the season, that being breaking the corpse of a dog mummy, which he thinks made him curse to unintentionally hurt animals and in turn make said animals hate him for this. Then there's the bickering between Gwen and Courtney, something that begins to eat away at Duncan more and more. By the time everyone gets to the other side, Chris wants another song. However, Duncan, someone who already hates singing, has had enough of Chris and the Bickersons back there, so he decides to completely call it quits despite it technically being a contract breach. Yet, Chris allows it for the time being. Next up is the team formations. DJ, Lashana, Lindsay, Harold, Bridget, and Ezekiel form Team Victory. Gwen, Izzy, Heather, Courtney, and Cody are Team Amazon, leaving Alejandro, Sierra, Noah, Owen, and Tyler as Team Chris is really, 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 really hot. The remaining challenges consist of a camelback across the desert into a boat weaving task turned race across a river. Sierra and Izzy end up switching teams so they can be closer to their respective love interests. This is where the bitter rivalry between Heather and Alejandro begins to form too. With Sierra on Amazon now, it gives Team Amazon a massive advantage thanks to her excellent weaving skills, earning them first place, Team Chris second, and Team Victory being the overall losers thanks to Ezekiel losing their main method of motion trying to scare off a crocodile. So history repeats itself here with with Ezekiel being voted off first again, followed by Duncan shortly after. Although it seems like Ezekiel won't be giving up his shot at the million without a fight. Now it's time for everyone to go to Japan. Chris decides to send them there in style with a giant hole appearing in the plane as everyone free falls into a giant rice bowl. Harold in particular starts to get on his team's nerves quite a bit with his know-it-all attitude about Japan, something Alejandro is able to take notice of. The first challenge places different contestants from each team in giant pinballs to score points on a giant pinball machine. And just for the fun of it, they have to do it with a baby panda inside. Naturally, DJ is having the least fun out of everyone, with the possible exception of Cody having to be in there with Sierra, allowing Alejandro to take an easy win for Team Chris in this part. The following part has each team making a Japanese-inspired commercial about a local snack. Team Chris has the advantage of picking whatever props they want to use first, too. On the Team Victory side, Harold wants to take charge on leading the commercial. His already big ego is being fueled even more by Alejandro behind the scenes. Al knew exactly what he was doing here. As for the Amazons, they just couldn't agree on anything, so Cody and Sierra had to take matters into their own hands, earning them the win for the day with their pretty low-budget yet happy commercial. Team Chris in second with their Godzilla-themed commercial, with Team Victory losing a second time in a row due to their old style Japanese take not being good enough. I'm starting to see a trend here with a team victory. <laughs> Harold now feeling bad for costing his team the win gets one final quote-unquote pep talk from Alejandro about how brave warriors should just go out after a loss like this, leading to Harold voting himself off the plane. Arguably one of Alejandro's most manipulative moments in the entire season, in my opinion. Hey, what's, uh, what's 
what's this guy doing here? You're not supposed to be here still. The next day, the kids get to freeze their asses off in the bitter cold Yukon. No coats or anything. Alejandro begins to plot his next target for elimination this time, Bridget. Someone who is clearly infatuated with Alejandro, like most of the other girls there. What makes her situation the sketchiest is she is dating Jeff, who can't keep her in check uh, because, you know, he's not competing this time. The two of them even accidentally kiss at one point. Eventually, the teams have to do a sled race, picking up different teammates at random checkpoints along the way. Bridget, in particular, gets left behind due to Alejandro tricking her into kissing a pole, so her tongue got stuck to it because it was so cold. Even though Team Amazon got their last, victory lost anyway since they didn't cross with the entire team. A shout out to Tyler and his absurdly strong fingers for earning Team Chris the win this time. At the end of the episode, this left Bridget as easy pickings to get voted off. But before leaving, she attempted to warn her team about Alejandro's evil ways, though they couldn't really understand her because the pole was still stuck to her tongue. This next episode, Broadway Baby, is this season's first instance of a reward challenge. These types of episodes I'm not going to go super deep into similarly to my action video due to the fact that they don't really move the plot forward all too much. I will say the challenges this time around take place in New York where Alejandro's main goal this time is to try to get Sierra on Chris's bad side and Heather heavily disapproves of this because now her team looks worse by extension. There were some pretty phony moments here and there too like Noah's being switched with a real baby while sleeping inside his carriage and pretty much everything that happened during the Statue of Liberty section. By the end, the Amazons won the reward, said reward being a bunch of snacks inside giant apples, one with candy inside, another with more apples, and the final one being a meat grinder, which Heather just doesn't care about. Cody seemed like he was the only one who really enjoyed the reward this time because he's kind of addicted to candy. Following the New York trip is our first look at this season's Aftermath specials. Because Bridget was competing, Blaine Lee, who appeared during the Celebrity Manhunt TD action episode, works as Jeff's co-host, trying to stir the drama pot of Bridget cheating on him with Alejandro. But Bridget now returns to set and she tries to apologize to Jeff through song, but Jeff still can't fully accept her. So Blaine Lee decides to make the two of them fight it out. Literally, in a boxing arena. But instead of fighting, they just start kissing right away, uh, taking kiss and makeup to a whole different level here. <laughs> As for Slap Slap Revolution, we're back to the POV of the main competition. This time in the cold Germany Alps, with challenges revolving around German sausage, sledding, and slap dances. Looks like Heather should have held that meat grinder from the last reward in high regard, huh? This results in them getting last place on the sausage sled challenge, victory gets second with the most normal looking one, and Team Chris somehow clutches it by simply riding on top Owen, who becomes so large due to just eating all the sauces his team was supposed to use. As for the slap dance part of the challenge, each team is given a different piece of headwear to, I guess, help protect themselves from the slaps? Cody got the worst of it, though, being forced to wear a pair of lederhosen as punishment for Amazon coming in last in the sausage race. After many slaps to the face from different people, it comes down to Heather vs. Lashana and Sierra vs. Alejandro. Heather attempts to warn Lashana about Alejandro's devious ways whilst trying to win it for her team. Lashana, already not liking Heather, combined with getting slapped in the face, completely sets her over the edge tackling Heather off the platform and proceeding to just slap her repeatedly. So hard, in fact, that Heather ends up getting one of her front teeth knocked out. Harsh. Seeing this, Alejandro decides to take a dive, possibly out of pity for Heather, allowing Sierra to win the challenge for the Amazons. Although maybe Heather was a bit overdue for some tough payback, it didn't seem like the rest of her teammates agreed with the sentiment, resulting in Lashana getting voted off, but not before seeing Alejandro's true colors for the first time. The next challenge takes place in the Amazon, and it's arguably one of the most dangerous in the season so far. Before the challenge begins, Alejandro's patience with Owen begins to reach its breaking point. The two never really got along great, that being mostly one-sided on Alejandro's end though, due to Owen's general incompetence and constant habit of calling Alejandro Al, a nickname he can't stand. Just like Owen said, punching him in the face during a nightmare probably didn't help much. Once they're in the Amazon, it's revealed the main challenge here is just one large race through the Amazon, with the first team to reach the ruins of Machu Picchu being declared winners. Despite Team Amazon being in the literal Amazon, they struggle harder than anybody else. From being captured by a fake tribe of people called the Zing Zings, to Gwen accidentally stabbing herself with Cody's allergy EpiPen, at least Heather was able to get her tooth replaced with a shiny gold one by these Zing Zings. However, her ego was quickly put back in check after it was revealed the guys in the tribe were just paid actors. Team Chris struggled a tad, but not as badly. It's mainly Owen who gets rolled overnight by some giant caterpillars. Owen claims Alejandro saw it happen, which was definitely true, but Alejandro claims it was a lie and spins it in a way where he comes out as the good guy since he was the only one to come back and check on Owen's whereabouts, which worked out because they still didn't come in last. Team Victory, who only consists of DJ and Lindsay now, actually won a challenge for once. The Amazons were now in the voting 
booth and Chris decided now would be a good time to reveal who voted for who. On top of saying it was a reward challenge after the fact, the biggest issue was Sierra learning that the love of her life, Cody, wanted her gone, which causes a major shift in the team's morale that even bleeds into the next episode. Surely going to Paris will be enough to fix things, right? The first challenge has the teams in the Louvre Museum, hopefully I pronounced that right, where everyone has to find different pieces of famous statues and put them back together. These were supposed to be replicas, but I guess Chef broke the real ones on accident? I genuinely impressed he just got away with this. And just to add some extra total drama spice, there's a bunch of angry wild animals chasing the teams around throughout their respective searches. DJ and Cody get the most focus here, I think. DJ ends up seeing a dog zombie display that looks near identical to the one he broke in Egypt, so in hopes of breaking his curse, he tries to ignore the challenge altogether just to get that mummy back. As for Cody, he's got to deal with a non-stop crying Sierra, doing whatever he can think of to cheer her up. Cody's at least able to get Sierra to calm down later on, but DJ gets screwed over by Izzy since she broke the mummy after saving it when he tried to drop it. <laughs> Victory ends up losing overall, but because Chris has a rare moment of sympathy, if you want to call it that, he decides to make DJ and Lindsay compete in a tiebreak fashion challenge, where they each have to make one of their fellow contestants model for them. DJ picks Gwen in hopes of losing so he doesn't have to deal with the curse at all anymore, while Lindsay picks Tyler. And despite DJ quite literally trying to lose, Lindsay somehow did worse, or at least the judges thought she did worse, resulting in her elimination and DJ being forced to stay longer. Now that DJ is a lone wolf, he's being constantly viewed as a pawn by Alejandro and Heather to get him in into an alliance. DJ's not biting at all though because no merge has happened still and the curse is allegedly still active. Challenge wise, we're in Newfoundland this time. Spoiler alert, it's a reward challenge again, but some important stuff does happen. First off, during the sailboat part of the challenge, Team Amazon chokes because Courtney and Gwen think they see Duncan in the distance, but it turns out it was just a rock shaped like him. Gwen was uh, suspiciously eager to see him too. Hmm. DJ can't seem to lose either, getting tricked into singing by Heather and later into drinking a jug of vinegar for the second part of the challenge. I will say my personal favorite part was hearing Chris's cousin, Jerd McLean, talk and the contestants just trying to translate what he says into proper English. The worst thing you can have in your head is an R2. The challenge concludes with Tyler and DJ having to kiss a fish. DJ refuses at first, but is persuaded by Heather to do it after seeing an Egyptian symbol on the fish, implying kissing it could break the curse for good. DJ ends up going through with it, and now he's more motivated than ever to win the million. However, it turns out Alejandro was behind the whole thing and just drew the symbol on a bunch of different fish. Now that DJ is spending time in first class together with Team Chris, Alejandro has all the leverage in the world. The following day, the total drama plane ends up running out of gas mid-flight, forcing the plane to make an emergency land in Jamaica. However, Owen and Izzy end up falling out of the plane on the way down. While they are unscathed at first, the two of them are subsequently crushed by the plane, somehow surviving the incident, but are forced to recover in a local hospital for the majority of the challenges. First challenge feels like a bit of a blast from the past, with everyone cliff diving into shark infested waters, but instead of just diving in, they have to avoid the sharks on the fly to get gold objects at the bottom. DJ is still trying his best, but struggles due to the life jacket he's wearing. Then there's Tyler, who's just grabbing every possible thing besides gold. allowing Gwen to indirectly take the win for her team and Heather, you know, doing the assist. Though Gwen gets electrocuted by eels along the way and now has to spend time with Owen and Izzy in the hospital. Once there, it's clear Izzy is acting much different now because of this injury. She's incredibly smart and apparently figured out how to time travel, something that the government is able to pick up on, so she actually goes off with the government and is out of the competition. But not before officially breaking up with Owen. Owen's little song number here with Gwen is another personal favorite of mine. Love the children's book art style montage of he and Izzy's uh, moments throughout the song. For the final part of the challenge, everyone has to ride down a death slide in pairs three different times, with the slowest average time sending someone home. DJ is on a roll for the first two. The Amazons and Team Chris, now reunited with Owen, aren't doing half bad either, so it's still kind of anyone's game. This isn't enough for Alejandro, though, who begins to target DJ directly after finding out there's not going to be any team merge still. So he intentionally reveals how he drew the eye of the fish, but plays it off as a nice guy just wanting to help DJ. This combined with Alejandro breaking a part of the slide during his last turn completely destroys DJ's confidence, resulting in him not even being able to finish the final slide and going home to mama. A poor DJ deserved better this season, man. We're back to the Aftermath specials again, and this one is a good one because they are directly impacting the ongoing competition, spending the entire special trying to raise money for the Total Drama crew in Jamaica so the competition can continue. If enough money isn't raised, then Total Drama World Tour can't continue.
Blaine is still involved in the Aftermath specials, but got demoted to a reporter, much to her dismay. Things go well for a while, until Blaine Lee releases a bunch of animals on set who destroy tons of equipment, changing the initial 500k donation goal to 1 million dollars. Izzy ends up being the one to come and clutch in the end. Jeff decides to test her newfound genius by making her answer tons of impossibly hard questions, with a wrong answer getting her dunked into a shark tank, but she keeps answering everything right yet suffers another head injury when the wheel kind of hits her, reverting her back into her old psychotic ways, where she causes a giant explosion on set. Funny enough, this further destruction was enough for the kids to reach their goal, and they got an extra dollar just because. Back to the regular contestants, it's time for them to go to London, one of my personal favorite episodes overall this season. Before the challenge even starts, Alejandro overhears Chris and Chef talking about how they want some shady guy taking out the contestants. Alejandro is visibly freaked out, but before he can properly leave, the shady figure has already caught him. As the crew flies over London, Chris has everyone jumping out of the plane via parachute. Noah and Owen in particular having to share one, where he later reveals the challenge to be a scavenger hunt around London related to the notorious serial killer, Jack the Ripper, aka the same guy that nabbed Al. From stripping down British soldiers, medieval torture devices, and dealing with angry corgis, this challenge had a lot going on. At one point, Noah in particular reveals to Owen how he doesn't trust Alejandro, comparing him to an eel dipped in grease. Whereas the Amazons get picked off by Jack one by I won until it's only Gwen and Courtney left. Those two end up going pretty far off course at one point, winding up at a punk concert where a familiar face resides. Team Chris is doing well despite being one man down, eventually turn two after accidentally leaving Tyler behind. Owen and Noah are led to the giant bus they landed on before Owen finds Jack trapping Noah inside a glass container. Owen attempts to use the angry corgis against him, which doesn't work at first, until a flying piece of sausage lands in Jack's hands. With everything settled, it's revealed the captured contestants were just on the plane the whole time, overhearing everything that happened too. Needless to say, Alejandro was not very pleased with Noah's comments from before. It's also quote-unquote revealed the Jack the Ripper double was Ezekiel, who was going to be allowed back in the competition if he avoided capture, but was tossed out again due to failing. That still isn't enough to stop this little gremlin, though. As for the Amazons, Gwen and Courtney were able to find Duncan at the punk concert, bringing him back into the competition and sort of earning the win here. With Team Chris now in the voting booths, the odds were completely stacked against Noah, so he had to take the dive of shame. Oh yeah, Duncan and Gwen are a thing now. I think we all saw this one coming. Well, maybe not all of us. The following day, the plane plans to land in Greece. Though prior to the landing, Gwen and Courtney are having a very in-depth discussion about Duncan. Courtney in particular, hoping the three of them can make it to the finale. Obviously, Gwen is feeling extremely guilty the entire time since the two of them just kissed in private, but is too scared to tell Courtney the truth out of fear of ruining their friendship, as well as getting eliminated. As for Team Chris, Tyler is feeling just as uncomfortable as Gwen because he was the one seeing them kiss. Alejandro is able to pick up on this, but doesn't know exactly what happened still. This doesn't stop him from trying to figure out the specifics so he can use it as more leverage later on, though. Once in Greece, Chris announces the teams will be competing in various Olympic-themed challenges. The first challenge being a 1v1 between Gwen and Duncan to grab a gold necklace off a bear's neck. Unfortunately for them, they have to be the ones focused on singing this time. So naturally, they sing about the riskiness of their relationship and how it's going to affect Courtney, something that Alejandro overhears in full. Gwen ends up winning this first part, with Team Chris winning the wrestling part thanks to Sierra and Courtney getting into their own fight over Cody not getting enough respect. The Amazons bring it back again Again, though, after Heather beats Alejandro in a hurdle jump race, something he probably could have won but got way too cocky during, leaving the final challenge as a flying race between Cody and Tyler. With this challenge deciding the winner, Alejandro takes it upon himself to force Tyler into revealing the kiss between Gwen and Duncan. Courtney, of course, freaks out but also doesn't want Cody to even try in the challenge so the rest of the girls can just vote Gwen off, playing right into Alejandro's hands by default. Cody's also horrified by this news, retaliating in his own way by sucker punching Duncan in the face, but just because Duncan's with Gwen now, that doesn't stop Cody's massive crush from disappearing. So in order to make Gwen stay longer, he gives it his all, winning the challenge for the Amazons. You'd think Duncan would be the easy default to go home now, but Chris decides to make it a last minute reward challenge to keep Duncan out longer. Having him go so soon would be boring for the ratings. Now things are more tense than ever on the plane. Team Amazon's all over the place, and Team Chris isn't feeling the best either. Duncan's definitely in the most pain right now though. Physical pain, that is. <laughs> Alejandra attempts to console Courtney over everything, suggesting she flirt with Tyler to make Duncan jealous, which does kind of work a bit. Challenge-wise, the teams will be competing in alien-related challenges inside the Area 51 base. Everyone starts in Area 52, but must make their way to Area 51 and steal an alien artifact. Said artifact must be kept intact as well, or else no point will be given. Pretty much everything in this episode is hilarious. Every individual adventure the teams go on trying to get an artifact just makes me smile. Cody having an evil alien clone that's still afraid of Sierra. Heather 
getting stuck in the portal, and of course, Owen's multiple blunders. Even, even the alien just couldn't believe what was going on. Courtney was totally sabotaging the entire episode too due to her still wanting Gwen gone ASAP. Heather wants her gone too, but her competitive nature can't stand the idea of giving someone like Alejandra a free win. Eventually, both teams are able to find one artifact each. Things look good for Team Chris at first until Tyler ends up stepping on a landmine, flying through the air and destroying the alien upon landing, giving the Amazons the win, much to Courtney's annoyance, leaving Tyler as easy pickings to go for technically losing his team the challenge. The next day, all eyes continue to be on Gwen. Well, just Courtney and Sierra's actually, leading into a fight between both parties to see who can get Heather to vote who off. Despite the attempts from Sierra and Courtney and Gwen and Cody, this is Heather we're talking about. She's not going to just abide by others' plans. She has to be the one to call her own shots and she'll go with it if she feels like it's the right strategic play. Team Chris has their own plans too, one involving Alejandra flirting with Courtney to throw her, and by extension Heather, off both their games. Eventually, the teams arrive in the barren lands of Australia, where the first part of the challenge consists of everyone riding emu back across the valley. Alejandro's plan to flirt with Courtney starts to work super well, especially on Heather, who tries to counter flirt with Duncan, but it just doesn't work nearly as well. At least the Amazons were able to win the first part of the challenge though, mainly thanks to Owen's emu going so slow due to the trouble of carrying his weight. The advantage is a pair of sheep shears, which needs to be used on the sheep they will be bungee jumping for. Whatever sheep has their team logo on it after sheared, wins. Despite Team Chris being at the clear disadvantage, Duncan is able to get some revenge on Cody for sucker punching him earlier by throwing a dingo at him before his jump, allowing Team Chris to clutch the win. When it comes down to eliminations, Courtney was originally going to be the one voted off because Heather got tired of her constantly throwing challenges. Problem is, Cody became super delirious after the dingo attack, so he ends up accidentally voting for Sierra instead of Courtney. To break the tie, Chris has both Courtney and Gwen feed eucalyptus leaves to koala bears, with whoever finishes last leaving. Sadly, Gwen is allergic to eucalyptus, resulting in her elimination. Unfortunate, but bound to happen considering what happened before. The Sweden Tour episode is a bit of a nothing burger, despite being pretty funny written. It's a reward challenge episode that just focuses on Cody dealing with the loss of Gwen, while Duncan and Alejandro try to get Owen on their good side as best as possible due to the team merger happening any day now. The Gwen's Face song seems to be a fan favorite too, and I can see why. It's, you know, it's catchy, and the whole disco number they went with worked well. Plus, there was more development between Heather and Alejandro here, with Heather confronting him about trying to pick off everyone on Team Amazon besides her. Courtney going home here is what everyone wanted in the competition, but that still had to wait a bit longer. The second to last Aftermath special of the season is a bit of an interesting one. Blamely has been on her worst behavior as of late, quite literally kidnapping Bridget and having her sent to Siberia. Uh, that is some next level fame hunger right there. Throughout the episode, we get updates on Bridget's status, where she eventually befriends a bear named Bruno, whom she doesn't want to leave because he got injured. As for the Aftermath people, they play a game to decide who's going to be allowed back into the competition, with the main participants being Beth, Tyler, Lashana, Lindsay, and Noah. Beth in particular makes it pretty far, but is having trouble on the last part, so a frustrated Blainly answers the question for her, meaning Blainly will now technically partake in Total Drama World Tour. Jeff made the smart play here as a way to finally get rid of Blainly from the Aftermath specials. Blainly tries to put up a fight, but is eventually caught by some interns and is shipped via crate to the competition's next location, Niagara Falls. Back on the plane, we open on Feral Ezekiel's POV, desperately trying to stay alive by eating stray pieces of cheese stolen from rats. Meanwhile, some of the Total Drama interns bring the contestants into the cargo hold. Owen in particular is having a nightmare about Alejandro ruining his food paradise, which serves as some foreshadowing later on. The reason everyone was taken to the cargo hold is so Chef could drop them into the falls below. Everyone assuming they're going to die starts to say crazy things before their impending dooms. Cody actually saying he'll let Sierra kiss him if they survive. This puts her into total overdrive to the point where she's able to save everyone from falling too far. Never test Sierra's resolve again, Cody. Never. Once everyone is safe on shore, Chris tells everyone about how the Niagara Falls themed challenges will be wedding based. But before they actually get into the nitty gritty of that, Blainly makes her big entrance into the competition through her own song. But why does Blainly's song have to be so catchy? Ugh. After she finishes, Chris decides now is the perfect time to dissolve the teams for good. The first challenge has each girl paired with a guy as a bride-groom pair. Alejandro and Heather, Cody and Sierra, Courtney and Duncan, then Owen and Blainly. Each groom has to guide their blindfolded bride to their respective wedding dress through a dangerous obstacle course. Everyone's able to get it done, including Sierra, despite Cody not even trying to win due to how bummed he was to be paired with her. The final part has each guy carrying his bride across a tightrope 
Bible hanging above the falls. Then once they cross, they have to answer questions about Canada provided by Chef. Alejandro in particular tries to get Heather to vote off Owen due to fearing his growing popularity amongst the general viewing audience, while Heather wants Courtney gone still. Their arguing gets so intense that they both fall into the water. Granted, Alejandro just pretended to fall to not appear too strong when the team's gone. I get the play here, but people definitely already saw him as a threat before this, so whatever. <laughs> Sierra and Cody, on the other hand, are in a whole different part of Crazy Town. Sierra tries to turn the challenge into an actual wedding between she and Cody. Apparently, she got ordained as a minister online and can legally bind them if Cody agrees, or gets tricked into agreeing. This obsession ends up getting in the way of them winning the challenge, too, leaving Duncan and Courtney to take an easy win here, despite their constant bickering the entire time. Later on, Alejandro is able to catch on to what Sierra has been trying to do to Cody, so he plays along with the idea of them getting married for real. So with him being the witness to this, he's able to gain Sierra and two others to vote off Owen alongside him. I'm sure Alejandro was thrilled to have some of his sanity back after so many long weeks. Now it's down to the final seven, and they're taking a trip to China. Round one is a race across the Great Wall of China, with each person taking different forms of transportation to get there. Duncan and Alejandro are able to keep up the pace with each other, even though Duncan had a much handier time with a bike, but Alejandro is basically a pro skater, so it worked out. Courtney got a tricycle, Cody got a donkey, Sierra a pogo stick, Blainley a rickshaw, while Heather got stuck with uncomfortable slippers. On the way up, Courtney's trike gets stuck in a crack, so Alejandro thinks helping her is the genuinely thing to do, plus it could gain her loyalty more, though Duncan thinks it's a waste of time. But in fact, it wasn't a waste of time, because this ended up helping Alejandro in the second part of the challenge. Blainley is also skimming through easy thanks to making a secret alliance with Chef, sort of like what DJ did in action, but even better. She and Alejandro's luck continues for a bit in the gross eating competition, because he keeps sneaking the food to Courtney to eat, while Chef gives Blainley better tasting food compared to the rest. Luckily, Duncan and Heather are able to catch on to everything, so Heather has Chris implement a quick rule where Sierra and Blainley have to switch bowls during the final round, while Courtney has to put on a dragon mask so food can't be snuck over, allowing Sierra to take an easy W this week. As for the voting, it comes down to a tie between Courtney and Blainley, but instead of doing a tiebreaker, Chris decides to just do a double elimination because he's getting annoyed about budget concerns. I love how Chris was able to get the last laugh on Blainley too. Imagine if she actually got the host instead of him, how much different the show would have been. Yeesh. Only five contestants remain now, and these guys are going to Africa for this week's challenge. The first challenge has each contestant running through a barrage of soccer balls kicked by the others while they try to grab a bunch of plums. Whoever gets the most plums gets the most chances to break down a gourd with them. Heather ends up winning this part despite getting teased by Chris about how much she likes Alejandro. Her reward is six trank balls, while the rest get less and less depending on how poorly they do. Said trank balls are meant to be used in a hunty game to subdue a feral Ezekiel, who looks even more ghastly than he did the last time we saw him. Poor guy is just barely human anymore. During this hunt, we get some truly hilarious moments, like Cody getting kidnapped by monkeys and Sierra going rogue from the challenge to save him. Then, of course, everyone accidentally hitting each other with some of their trank balls, leading to some of my favorite moments in the season. Loser is what the lion called you when you couldn't find your balls. Trank balls, that is. Classic. There's also Heather and Alejandro briefly forming an alliance to get rid of Duncan, with a plan involving Duncan getting covered in blood berries to use as bait for feral Zeke. This works almost too well, where Ezekiel just attacks Duncan for a while, allowing Alejandro to win the challenge and still have his two votes against Duncan, leading Duncan to going home for good this time. With Duncan now gone, Alejandro's eyes are beaming for Heather to go. Sierra and Cody aren't much threats to him, so Heather's gotta go ASAP in his eyes. His plan begins by inviting Cody back to first class with him and bribe him with tons of candy to eventually turn his gratitude into a vote against Heather. The challenge in particular this time around is a reward challenge on Easter Island, fittingly searching for various eggs hidden in statues modeled after the voted off contestant. It's a lot of Alejandro trying to win Cody over while Heather tries to win Sierra over. Well, with Heather eventually coming out on top in the final part of the challenge, Alejandro and Cody resorted to voting for Sierra instead. Though, like I said, it was a reward challenge, so nothing came of it. Fun episode, but a bit on the uneventful side. With the plane now headed to Alberta, Canada for the next challenge, Alejandro starts to take drastic measures to get rid of Heather. This being photoshopping a photo of what was originally Sierra and Cody sleeping next to each other to Cody and Heather sleeping next to each other. This is even more perfect because after Sierra saved Cody in Africa, he's finally starting to warm up to her a bit more. Even though she is extremely creepy and overbearing, she is the main reason Cody has been able to make it through so many challenges. Alejandro ends up showing the picture to Sierra, which makes her go even crazier than normal. This continues throughout the two parts of the challenge, which are building a small model dinosaur out of various materials turned oil digging race. 
Eventually, Cody asks why Sierra is so mad. So she shows him the photo and he points out it's an obvious fake. Because Sierra leaving Cody alone that long would be incredibly out of character for her. So they both realize what Alejandro was trying to do and they want him gone next. As for Heather, she ends up getting stuck in a hole asking Alejandro for help. At first, Alejandro breaks out into strong about how much he wants to leave her behind, but Heather is able to convince him there's a better way to do this. They're the two best players Total Drama has ever seen, so it'd be a waste for Alejandro just to win this way. This convinces him to help her as long as she doesn't vote for him ever again. At the elimination ceremony, Sierra tries to do a celebration for Cody, but her sparkler candles end up igniting over spilled oil near the plane, resulting in the entire plane exploding. Chris, now furious with Sierra, removes her from the competition when it actually would have been Alejandro going home, meaning Heather voted for him anyway behind his back. He's able to find this in the wreckage, and he is not playing Mr. Nice Guy anymore. Not that he ever was to begin with, but still. The final Aftermath special revolves around which of the final three will get an advantage in the final challenge. Bridget also returns to Jeff's side, but so does Bruno the Bear, who's grown an intense attachment to Bridget to the point where he hates any attention Jeff tries to give her. As for how the advantages will be achieved, three, or technically four players, will have to surf down a mountain and throw a lee around the neck of a specific animal. Harold surfs for Cody, Owen slash Blainley surf for Heather, and Courtney surfs for Alejandro. Courtney succeeds in getting the lay around her animal's neck, giving Alejandro a wheelbarrow for the final part of the challenge. Harold comes close, but the deer he chose just eats it instead, leaving Cody with a baby carriage, and Heather just gets nothing. With the total drama plane still destroyed, Chris decides the final challenge will be for the final three to race to Hawaii by any means necessary, with whoever gets their last being out, no exceptions. Alejandro confronts Heather over her vote, officially ending their short-lived alliance. As for their modes of transport, Heather takes a train, Alejandro sneaks a ride onto the total drama animal transport truck, while Cody, with the help of Sierra, constructs a makeshift hot air balloon to fly to Hawaii. While inside the truck, Alejandro finds Ezekiel trapped inside a crate. He agrees to free him if he behaves for him. So by the time he catches up to Heather and sneaks onto the train she's on, he unleashes Ezekiel on her to slow her down. She ends up getting chased all the way to the top outside part of the train. Alejandro even tries to cut the last car she's on. The two of them continue to try to knock each other off the train while singing the classic I'm gonna make it song. Alejandro and Heather end up both getting knocked off though and use horses to reach the closest beach with speedboats. Meanwhile, Cody and Sierra really struggled due to bad weather, eventually crashing the hot air balloon altogether. Cody starts to get a bit of down in the dumps after this, but Sierra is able to boost his motivation again, where they turn Sierra's wheelchair into a rocket and get to the speedboats first. The speedboat race gets pretty brutal, but Heather is able to make it there first even though her boat ran out of gas. This mostly being because of Alejandro and Cody having to have their little uh, sword fight. At first, Cody looked like he was going across first, but Alejandro's boat crashed into a landmine that propelled them closer to the finish line, meaning he and Cody would have to duke it out in a final tiebreaker to see who could be in the final two. The finale is now here. Probably my favorite episode in the entire season and franchise as a whole. If you want a more in-depth breakdown on why I like this episode so much, I can link it in the description below, as well as in the end cards at the end of the video. To break the tie, Alejandro and Cody must fight using jousting sticks to knock the other person into shark-infested waters. Despite Alejandro being much stronger naturally than Cody, Cody actually puts up a semi-decent fight for a bit. This is until Heather purposely distracts Cody by yelling about Sierra being in danger. Clearly, she'd rather fight Alejandro in the finals over Cody. God, I love their dynamic so much. The first part of the final challenge is Alejandro instructing Courtney and Lindsay to build a wooden mannequin of Heather, while Heather has Cody and Harold build one of Alejandro. Alejandro's team wins it, getting a bit of a head start as well as the promised wheelbarrow from the final aftermath challenge. Heather at least gets what was going to be Cody's baby carriage, but the mannequin of Alejandro was so heavy, it was just crushed under the pressure. Alejandro stays in the lead for most of the race to the top of the volcano, yet Heather refuses to give in, carrying Alejandro's heavy mannequin on her back the entire time. There was a point where Heather kind of caught up during the booby trap section after Alejandro ranted about wanting to finally surpass his bully of an older brother, Jose, combined with Cody calling him Al a bunch of times. But he got ahead again when Cody accidentally trapped Heather. She loses motivation for a little while until Cody implied she was the good guy for once in the saga, which was enough to get her motivation back and keep going. Once Alejandro reaches the top and is about to throw Heather's mannequin into the volcano, Heather stalls him for one last time. Alejandro surprisingly gives her the time of day to talk, wanting her to confess his feelings for him. Him, which she ends up kind of doing accidentally. He proposes their combined powers could be enough to rule the world. Heather warms up to the idea, and the two of them share quite the 
over the top kiss. However, Heather planned to double cross him again, kneeing him in the crotch and slapping him all the way down the mountain, becoming the big winner of Total Drama World Tour. And yeah, there is a version where Alejandro wins off a of technicality when Heather throws the mannequin of her into the volcano instead of Alejandro's model. But before Heather can claim her prize, the Hawaiian locals warn Chris nobody was supposed to throw things into the volcano or else it could cause an eruption. This combined with Feral Zeke coming out of nowhere to steal Heather's million and falling into the volcano in the process causes an eruption and just complete chaos everywhere. All the previous contestants haul ass off the island to swim for their lives while Alejandro is briefly left behind, catching on fire when a stray fireball hits him too. Chris then fittingly signs everyone off as the chaos continues, with this scene being the last time we'd see these original contestants for quite some time. However, in a special post credit scene, an injured Alejandro is seen being stuffed inside of the drama machine suit, where Chris informs him of the million being torched by the volcano, to which Alejandro screams, No! Very tragic fate for a character to meet, if I do say so myself.